Hey guys, welcome to another Tati Reacts. Um, today I'm going to be reacting to Ruby Volume 4, Chapter 3. Um, last chapter, we got a look at some of Weiss's part, and then, like, the Ruby, sorry, Ranger Gang. Um, so first of all, we start off with Weiss walking around her awesome, like, mansion. Like, who knows how big it is? I'm sure it's gigantic, but from what we see, there's all these statues and just high walls and all that. Um, another thing I noticed was her, like, snowflake semblance was, like, all over the house, which was kind of cool. I, li I like that kind of detail. Um, right away she w runs into her brother, Whitley, um, who I n could tell from the opening that had to be her brother. Um, he just seems really, like, smug and, like, he's up to no good, kind of. Um, he just seemed like a brat to me, and I mentioned that in my other video. Because uh, he talks... <laughs> Like, good about winter, and, like, why says, oh, well, you don't like winter, and he's just like, I don't, but, yeah, so he's just kind of weird, um, so we'll see where he goes, and then, so we find out, uh, Weiss has to go talk to her dad, where she goes next. Then, we skip back t to Ranger, and Ruby had, like, a nightmare about Pura. Which is interesting. It was basically like dialogue of Pura saying John's name and then Ruby shouting Pura's name when she did the silver eyes move. Um, I don't know what to make of that. Because it's not the only time it happens. It happens two nights in a row as we see later on in the episode. Um, but before that, the two are heading towards a village. Or sorry, not two, what the fuck. Um, the gang is heading towards a village. Shion, I believe. And John's going about his seven sisters and how they've been like around that area before and he talks about a warrior's will tell, which I mentioned in the other one, and I feel like that really reminded me of Sokka from Avatar the Last Airbender. Cause I'm an Avatar ho, but that's not important. Um They get to the village and they find a dead uh everything's destroyed. And there's a dead um or oh, sorry, dying huntsman, and he says, like, bandits attacked, but it's really, like, grim or something, and he eventually, like, dies, and it was actually kind of graphic, not, like, gory graphic, but just, like, his he dies with his eyes open, and there's blood, and I just feel like it's taking on a darker tone, um, and then, uh, when they were walking away, Ren and Nora find, it looks like a footprint of some sort, but I'm not necessarily sure. But they kind of had a look that they knew what it might have been. I don't know. Um, we get cut back to Weiss, and she goes into her father's study, where her father's, like, hammering down on Ironwood, <laughs> talking about he's mad that he's not, like, selling dust to other parts of Remnant and blah blah blah. He wants money. He's greedy. Whatever. Um, <laughs> and Ironwood, of course, is just like, well, you can't do this, because this is, like, a bad idea, which it is, and, like, this guy's just mad, because he can't get his money. Eventually, Ironwood leaves, and Weiss talks to her dad, and her dad's just like, well, why do people... It's, it's absurd that people think we're such bad people, and they blame us for Beacon, and whatever, and he's just mad, like I said. Um... And so he tells Weiss he wants to hold, like, a festival where he <laughs> wants her to perform to gain, like, likes and stuff, because she was at Beacon at the time. And she's going to sing, which should be interesting if she actually does sing. I would want to see that. Um, she leaves, and interestingly enough, Klein rep is, like, the seven dwarves. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't really think about it at first. I just thought that was this weird, like... It makes a lot of sense that he is. She's Snow White for crying out loud. <laughs> and he had, like, the four personalities, like, right there. Um, I'm pretty sure he has all the rest, but we just haven't seen them yet. Um, and that was, that's really cool. That's so clever. And I feel just... Rooster Teeth is so clever when they do that. Um... Yeah. Uh, it's a really sad ending. I almost cried, but I'm not going to. I... I know I watched Murder of Birds' reaction, and 
I love I love that guy. He's awesome. Um, he's just so emotional and like. I feel that, you know, <laughs> he's awesome, um, but, uh, yeah, it was basically John was training to, like, a hologram of Pyrrha, and, like, he kept rewinding it over and over, which just made it worse, and, like, yeah, but the visions of Pyrrha, I don't know what to say about that, that's interesting, maybe she gains some kind of part of Pyrrha's consciousness, I don't know, I have no idea, but, uh, so far, so good. Um, I'm gonna get right into it with uh, chapter three. So, which is it's 18 minutes, so that's cool. I'll get that started right now. All right, guys, here it is. About to start it now. Are we gonna? We're gonna see um, Blake. I bet. Maybe. <laughs> Just yep. <yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love like it's Blake's outfit. Like alone? Now, now, no threat here. Just here to chat. And why is that? Well. Not many people travel by boat on their own. It can be quite a lonely voyage. But I've found those that do tend to have the more interesting stories. Maybe it's just better for some people to be alone. <gasps> Why'd you gotta be like that? <laughs> Maybe. But with your paranoia, I think a few friendly faces wouldn't hurt. Who says I'm paranoid? <laughs> No one, dear. No one. I'll leave you be. <laughs> but, uh, fair warning. These trips can be awfully boring. Why is he on her case like that? <laughs> Yes. Don't be this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who? Who is that? And what was that in the water? <laughs> Yang is so depressed. Try as they might, the local huntsmen and huntresses can't seem to get a hold of the situation at Beacon Academy. Though the failsafes have supported wireless communication within the kingdom, the loss of the CCT tower continues to prevent contact with the outside world. Talks with Atlas officials regarding repairs have so far... The Vale Council voted this week to continue to ban any air traffic that does not have a direct correlation with evacuation. Council has made it clear that they feel... That Multiple rumors continue to Look at her face. She's so sad. At the Vital Festival tournament. Wait, what? While no one knows for sure, officials have confirmed that high-ranking White Fang member Adam Torres was present for the attack. No. Oh. Any and all attempts to bring him into custody have been met with brutal force. That jerk. I'm home! <laughs> hey, Dad. Guess what came in today? What? I can't wait for you to try this. <gasps> no. Well? It's for me? It, it's probably mm -hmm. a prosthetic or something. <gasps> All those people were right. Okay. <laughs> Brand new state of the art Atlas tech. For a robot arm, yeah. Have to pull some strings. Mm -hmm. Call a few favors. 
but you I expected that. All on your own, kiddo. Huh? Before I could even talk to him, General Ironwood already had one of his top scientists working on this. For you. He wanted me to tell you that you fought admirably. You should be proud of yourself. Well, if you're gonna try it on? I, uh... I'm not feeling too great right now. Hmm. Maybe later? <laughs> All right. Poor Yang. Thanks, Dad. I feel really bad for her. She basically just had like a PTSD moment right there. All the Bumblebee fans are gonna like be like crying and <laughs> all over this. Who is that? Who's there? It's Sun. Bet. It's Sun. <laughs> Red alert! It's a groom? Okay, wow. I, I like her already, I know you know she's important. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> what was that? Son? Not today, pal. Is that his semblance? Uh, uh, you know, just uh, hanging out. <laughs> Like you can get all the help you can get. Ugh. Just shut up and 
fight. <laughs> I love the relationship. Shipping or not. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Still got the heavy cannon? Aye, but it's moving too fast. We can't land a hit. <clears throat> How about the engines? Fully functional, Captain. Well, all right then. I know it's like an old school looking ship, but they have like the freaking like touch screens. <laughs> Huntsman! The animation on stuff. Wow. And draw it out towards the bow. We can take it. This is too much for me. My heart. I mean, you're the one with the sword. <laughs> this is the part where you say it. Uh. <laughs> That's it. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> Seriously, it was no big deal. Just enjoy the rest of your trip and everything will be cool. We got this. This is like a Faunus ship. There's a lot of Faunus people on it because I don't think the captain and his what crew are. Doing here, son? But I don't know. Digging the new outfit, by the way. Never did like the bow. Son! <laughs> Have you been following me? He cares about you. Off. The night beacon tower fell. Once we landed in Vale, you made sure everyone was okay, and then you just took off without saying anything. Basically. I had to. For what? You wouldn't understand. No, I get it. The moment you left, I knew exactly what you were doing. You're going on a one-woman rampage against the White Fang. What? You've always <laughs> felt like the Fang was your fight. They show up, trash your school, hurt your friends. It makes perfect sense. I can't believe you. But there's no way <laughs> I'm letting you do this alone. It's an honorable approach for sure, but you're gonna need someone watching your back. And that's where I come in. Us Fauna's gotta stick together after all. <laughs> you're wrong, son. You're so, so wrong. Yeah, she's so stubborn. What are you? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near the White Fang. Not yet. Seriously? Mm. I need to sort some things out. Then why with her family, with I bet. Team? As we've seen in the friends. intro. You're one to talk. Assuming Neptune, Sage, and Scarlet aren't hiding below deck. You really think I could get Neptune on the ocean? True. <laughs> they flew back to Mistral. I told them I'd catch up. Not the first time I left them to take a boat. So, if you're not going after the White Fang, where are you going? Her family. Home. Yep. To Menagerie. Menagerie. Well, I'm coming with you. The Grim are getting worse. You saw it yourself. And just because you're not going after the Fang doesn't mean they won't be coming for you. Besides, I'm kind of already on the boat. <laughs> There's really no stopping you. Nope. <laughs> this is going to be great. Never been to Menagerie before. It'll be a regular journey to the east. Oh, Menagerie. Okay. Yeah. 
I like the sound of that. The water and the moon. <laughs> yes. Do you feel it? Don't fight it, girl. What is she doing? What is she sense your trepidation. <laughs> You must make it dread you. I won't. <laughs> Poor Emerald of oh <laughs> Emerald of Mercury's faces. What the fuck is that? It sounds like the grudge. It looks like it's sucker face now. Cinder, I am going to ask you this one more time, and I expect a clear answer. Did you kill Ozpin? No, she didn't. I want to hear you say it. Yes. She's lying. She. Why would she lie to her? <laughs> Look at her. Why would she lie to that? The relic is. The fuck? <laughs> what are you planning? What is that thing? Does she have a name? She's really cool and cute. First, the first mate. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> that was intense and I loved it. Oh, wow. Okay, so a lot happened in that chapter. Uh, it was so fun to watch. Um, starting off with like the ship coming in, I already knew it was Blake just because from the base on the opening, you know, she was on a ship. Um, and I love her outfit. She looks super good in it. Um, Bay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically the captain is like talking to her, like, "Why are you alone? It's it'll be a lonely voyage." and Whatever, just getting all up in her business, and she's just like, uh, I like being alone, and yeah, he leaves her alone, and uh, then we see like a mysterious person in a hood, or son, I should say, it's son, um, and he's stalking her, and we go to Yang, yes, <laughs> I love how they did that, I really, yeah, First two episodes, it was like White Rose. <laughs> this episode, Bumblebee. No, no, no. I shouldn't. I shouldn't just jump to the fandom. Okay, I will. Uh, anyway, we got a Yang, and she's looking all depressed, flipping through channels, just like <laughs> it's really sad. And um, just news on like all the recent events at the Fall Beacon and all that, and like Adam Torres is wanted. Um. Which, I, she's, she's, you know, it's, I feel bad for her seeing Adam's face. <laughs> uh, her dad comes and he gets her a freaking robot prosthetic from Atlas, made by Ironwood, 
specifically for Yang because he thought she was like honorable for helping the fight. And a lot of people predicted that she'd get the robot arm in. I mean, I did too. And that was, that's cool. But she's very reluctant though, like at first. And she's just like, no, I'm not feeling it right now. So she just leaves. Um, and then it like shows a bunch of cutscenes of how, what, how she um, lives with her, just her one arm now. You know, she's sweeping, uh, doing dishes and stuff. But she drops a dish and basically has like a whole freak out, like PTSD seeing like to like Adam's face and she just freaks out and I honestly feel bad for her. I mean of course you who wouldn't have PTSD after this man cut your arm off. I I'm really sympathizing with her though. And I wish Blake could be there to like hold her and comfort her but but uh, Okay, anyway. Moving back to Blake. <laughs> and we've already been seeing this like weird serpentine looking thing swimming around the boat that no one seems to care about at first. Um, but anyway, she, she catches the guy in the hood, which is Sun, and she's just like, Sun, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and like, um, all of a sudden this sea monster slash dragon thing comes out of the water and starts attacking the ship. Um, the captain and his first mate, who I really like her design, and I hope she becomes somewhat, um, important, because she's super cool looking. Um... But they, like, start, you know, trying to drive it away at the boat. Um, and then Blake and Sun start fighting it. Um, I think we saw Sun's semblance. And that was, like, clones. It was, like, yellow clones or something like that. Um, which is kind of cool, because it kinda, it's kind of like Blake in a way. It's, I mean, she just has, like, a mirrored image of herself, but he has, like, multiples of himself. I feel like that's kind of related in some way, which is kind of cool. Um, but, uh... Yeah, this thing freaking sprouts wings. Like, it looks like... It first starts off as looking like the serpent off of Avatar The Last, Last Airbender, The Serpent's Past. <laughs> and, like, all of a sudden it grows freaking wings. Um, and I don't know how to... <laughs> These Grim just keep getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but it had a really cool design, like... Honestly, maybe the coolest Grim I've seen so far, in my opinion, honestly. Um, and it took a while to beat. Eventually they, like, knock it down and, like, the ship just rams through and cuts its head off. But yeah, I really like that. Oh yeah, and then Blake, so Blake talks about how she's so mad at Sun for following her everywhere and, like, she just wants to be alone and he's just like, well, why? Where are you going? Like, are you going to go off with the White Fang? And she's like, well, no, I'm not. I'm just going to go home. And, like... We saw what looked like her family members on in the intro. I'm not sure. I know that was probably her dad, the big guy. And people were saying it's either her sister or her mom. I'm pretty sure that's her, her sister next to him. Um, she didn't look that old. But then again, it's Ruby and people don't look old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God. Oh my God. And then freaking back to freaking... <clears throat> um, Salem's hellhole. <laughs> it's basically hell. What can I say? Um, and Cinder, I think, is getting her treatment. I don't know how she's doing it, but she doesn't sound like she's comfortable. And, like, Salem's just questioning her. Mercury and Emerald are in the back towards the door. Um, looking horrified as always. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden this freaking thing comes in. It looks like some blood suck sucking, like, jellyfish looking... I don't even know, with a glowing light, and it sounds like the freaking grudge. And it honestly scared me. <laughs> you could tell they were scared, I was even scared. Um, but it, like, it's next to Cinder. I'm gonna have to watch it again, I don't know what it was, like, doing. But anyway, Salem was like, I'm gonna ask you again, Cinder, you better tell me, did you kill Ozpin or not? Which, obviously, he's not dead. How could the headmaster of the High End Academy, you know, be dead? And, I don't know, it's just... Obviously, he's not. And she's mentioning for Emerald to come over, and Sam's just like, no, I want to hear it from you. And, like, <laughs> I don't know if she maybe thought Emerald would lie or something, but uh, but Cinder says, yeah, she did kill him. I don't think you did. <laughs> then I'm kind of scared that, I mean, obviously Cinder's bad, and, like, I don't have... 
I can go on a rant about this. Um, but, like, she shouldn't have lied. I don't know if she really, truly, like, knows she lied. Or if she really thinks she's telling the truth. But, like, that could have bad consequences. Considering Salem is, like, this evil, scary-looking demon witch person. I don't know. She's just really scary. And I'm pretty sure she can kill Cinder if she wanted to. So, yeah. That's kind of... It's kind of interesting. Um... So yeah, that's all basically the episode. Then we see the character designs in the credits. Um, again, as always, awesome quality animation was on fleek. Um, especially with that sunset. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm getting more comfortable doing this, so that's probably why I'm a little more, like, you know, bubbly about it. Um, at first I was a nervous wreck. Uh, yeah, basically I hope, I'm maybe, I'm thinking next episode we're gonna get more Yang and Blake. Just cause it was like that for the first two, it was still, um, Weiss and Ruby for the first two and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, I just want to see the gang come back together. They need each other. No, I can honestly, like, see that. That they all miss each other dearly. Um. I hope Emerald has more dialogue. Okay. <laughs> Don't hate me, but I hope Emerald just has more dialogue and she runs away and she becomes good and tries to start her life over and, like, she deserves redemption. I'm sorry. That's for another time. <laughs> I did a whole rant on this on Tumblr and I always put it in the description, so. Yeah. Uh, that's basically it for now. Um, thanks for watching this. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens next, though. Like, honestly. So much shit is about to go down. And remember, Tyrion's after Ruby and the freaking Ranger gang, so. And Tyrion, a lot of people like Tyrion. I don't really like him. Because he's crazy, and, like, I hate his laugh, and he's a dick, and... I don't know. Then again, they all seem like dicks. <laughs> yeah. Um... Stay tuned for a reaction to The Walking Dead. Because I know I already said that I was going to do a reaction on the first season, but I ended up watching, like, to almost the end of season three, so... I'll just be react like reacting like on how I feel about the characters and stuff. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably do that um, later. Um, so yeah, please just like and just subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm an up-and-coming vlogger, so don't hate support me and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.